there, my name is Dr. Katie Saint, and this video is on parent involvement. A lot of times parents will ask me how involved they should be and what that looks like. And so I'm hoping this video is going to be helpful in explaining the science behind your involvement and what that's gonna look like for your therapy. So starting with the science, we are so lucky to have well over 50 years of research that tells us why people do what they do. And one of the most researched based principles is that our behaviors are completely shaped by our environment. And so what I mean by our environment is our interactions with people, the outcomes of what we do. So if I try to open the door and the door doesn't open, that means my behavior didn't work. So my brain's gonna record that. And if I do that enough times, I'm gonna stop attempting to open that door. So our brain is constantly recording these behaviors and the outcomes of these behaviors. This is not a conscious process. This is happening unconsciously. And based on these outcomes, we are either gonna do something or we won't do something. So part of what we do in ABA therapy is we analyze the environment and we look for these patterns. And if we shape these patterns to our favor, so those behaviors that we want to see more of get reinforced, they're effective, they work for your child, then that child is gonna engage in those behaviors way more often. So I've had parents tell me, I don't really think that my child's paying attention to those things. I don't think they're going to make those connections. But the research tells us that every human, no matter the diagnosis, no matter the IQ level, their brain is constantly recording these interactions. And so we can't help but have our behavior shaped in this way. So because of this core principle, we need parents involved in therapy because if we don't change parents' interactions with their children, it's going to be really hard to shape the behaviors because every response that you give to your child shapes whether or not that child is going to do that specific behavior again. So we need you to be involved in therapy with us so we can help you see those patterns and we can help you figure out if you need to react to that, if you need to ignore that, if how you reacted actually reinforced it or not. And sometimes when you are just starting out with therapy, all of this information can feel a little bit overwhelming and it can be a lot, but it is so much easier when we can do it right alongside of you. So one really cool thing about in-home ABA is we get to do life with you. And so we get real life situations where we can apply these principles and show you exactly how they're implemented. The ultimate goal is that you won't need therapy forever. Eventually, we're going to go away. Fox Valley Autism follows a four-year plan. And so this didn't always, this wasn't always the case. We could have lasted longer and been in therapy for more years in the past, but that model has gone away now. And now it is focused on a four-year model where we want to transfer the skills over to the parents because you are the most powerful and most consistent thing in the in your child's life, and you have the most power to shape their behaviors. So we want you to be an expert on what reinforces their behavior and what doesn't, so that you, you know how to build those skills, you know how to shape the behavior so that your child can ultimately be as successful as possible. So when parents are not involved in therapy, it's very hard to transfer these skills over. So there's an ABA term called behavior contrast. And this is when a child learns that 
in the presence of certain people or a certain location, they act a certain way. But then in the presence of different people or a different location, they act a different way. And the reason for that is because the different environments are responding different to the child and their brain is unconsciously recording that. And so then they know, okay, I'm in this environment. I can act this way. And now, oh, I'm in this environment with these people. I can act this way. So your child is unconsciously figuring out these patterns. And so sometimes this is a really good thing. And sometimes this is a bad thing because problem behaviors are accidentally being reinforced. And so we need your involvement so that we can make sure this behavior contrast isn't happening. We want your child performing in all environments, using their communication, using their regulation skills, using their independent skills. If a child doesn't have that consistency, they're likely only going to perform in certain settings or in some cases, how heavily a behavior is reinforced in one environment could overflow to all the environments. And so then that child won't quit doing that problem behavior because it's just too powerfully reinforced. So we want to walk alongside you. We want to help you figure out those patterns so that your child can be as successful as possible. So does that mean you need to be involved in therapy 100% of the time? No, absolutely not. And in some cases, it is helpful to have some separation where they work one-on-one with your child and a therapist, and then later on, you're involved. And so we can teach the skill in a concentrated, focused environment, and it's mastered. We've got it figured out. And then we generalize it to you. So sometimes you're going to see that mix. We don't need you to be there 100% of the time. But ultimately, we want you there a lot so that that transfer of skills can happen. So if you want to know what stage you're in uh, with your therapy team, Talk to your senior therapist or your lead therapist. This is a great topic to go over at team meetings. So typically the pattern that we follow is when a family first starts ABA therapy with us, parent involvement is the least amount in the first year. So we do some parent training, we do um, things like that, and parents observe therapy, But then as the years go on, we really increase that parent training and that parent involvement because we want you to be the ultimate expert. We want you to feel so confident when therapy ends that you have the skills you need. You can recognize those patterns. You know what to reinforce. You know what you're doing that's accidentally reinforcing the wrong things. So we want you to feel like an expert. So Another question I get is, is it okay to leave? And what happens if my child uses me as escape? I've had a lot of parents tell me, I feel like when I'm there, my child doesn't learn as good. He always comes to me. And so I'm a distraction. So if that is the, if that is the case for you, your therapy team might talk with you about that and be like, okay, what I want you to do is... For an hour, I want you to just go get coffee or, you know, go in your office or your bedroom, watch a TV show, and then come back, you know, so they might set parameters for you to help work on that skill. In other situations, we're going to use that escape behavior as a therapeutic moment. So we're going to work with you and the child to learn, okay, this child is trying to use mom as an escape. So we're going to coach mom on her response, how she can encourage and love her child, but then also not allow that escape or reinforce that escape. So these sort of situations are super valuable therapeutic moments. And so 
we can partner with you. And by doing this, you're also gaining these skills and learning how to reinforce or handle escape behavior or shape that so the escape behavior isn't a problem. So if these things are happening, talk to your therapy team. We can work with you. We can make a plan. So ultimately, what if you see what happens in therapy, if you are a part of that process, then you can help generalize it outside of therapy. So take communication, for example. Almost all of the clients that we work with have communication goals. And that is a goal that is so critical to be used across the board. If only therapy is working on communication, the amount of progress that's going to happen is so much slower versus if therapy is working on it and then the family's working on it outside of therapy, we're gonna see way more results. Potty training is another one. If only the therapy team is working on potty training and it's not getting worked on outside of therapy, it's going to be hard to make progress. So there is so many goals. Problem behaviors is one of the biggest ones. If we are working hard in therapy with a behavior plan to make, say you have a kid that's violent, say you have a kid that is headbanging or, you know, whatever problem behavior and therapy is working hard on a behavior plan and then that's not being worked on outside of therapy, that behavior is going to last longer. It is going to be so much harder to make that behavior go away. So we need parents to be involved enough to know how to work on some of these goals outside of therapy. Do we expect you to sit down and do therapy activities with your child? outside of therapy all the time? No, absolutely not. But when we're talking about communication, for example, every time there's an opportunity for your child to communicate, if you're implementing those strategies, like say, for example, you're working on one to three word sentences. And so your child makes a grunt and you just give them what they want. That was a missed learning opportunity. So what we want you to do is say, oh, say milk, please. And then they say milk, please. And you give it to them and bam, you doing that, the more repetitions of that, the more that is the standard, the child will accept them that this is my reality. Everybody is expecting me to use my words and this is consistent. Therefore, I'm going to start talking. This reduces anxiety because their environments are consistent, the expectations are consistent, and so we see a ton of behavior growth when that consistency is across the board. So I hope that this video makes sense in regards to we want you involved, but you don't have to be involved all the time. The amount of involvement we need is enough for you to know what to do outside of therapy, and what things to target. So if you're watching this video and you're wondering, like, I don't know if I'm doing that, reach out to your senior therapist or your lead therapist. Set up a meeting so you can talk about it and make a plan. Because the more we have this solidified, the more confidence that you have that you know what to do, you know what you're targeting, the more progress your kid is going to make. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that this video was helpful. I know that being a parent of a child with a disability is a big task. Being a parent in general is a big task. And so hopefully we can equip you with some strategies that are going to make your life easier and your child is going to learn skills that are going to help them thrive and a lot of these skills that we're targeting, we're hoping is going to bring peace to your family and help your family connect and have fun together. And so that is our goal for you, that we are targeting these functional goals that are going to create these meaningful moments for your family outside of therapy. So ultimately, your child and your entire family are happier. 
So thank you so much for listening. Please reach out to your therapy team to get more specifics for how this applies to your individual situation.